welcome back to Combat Mission Battle for Normandy for the 12th mission in the Scottish Corridor campaign. Having repelled a German counterattack earlier in the day, the 9th Cameronians are looking to secure their position at Granville by taking and holding the Granville Chateau. That's the only objective for this mission. There are 250 victory points on the table for exclusive control of the Chateau, Objective Haddo. This is off to the left, screened by Bacage with three sets of buildings. First we have a gatehouse, tightly surrounded by hedgerows, then a more exposed outbuilding complex with some barns, and finally the chateau itself in its own high-walled compound. The briefing indicates that there is a small force of Germans within the bounds of the chateau area, probably in less than platoon strength. There are also some German survivors from the earlier counterattack holed up in Le Carouge, these are apparently unlikely to move, but can still cover some of the approaches to the chateau with fire. Finally, there are some snipers to quote off to the west of the village, probably meaning in the Ferme de Chateau. This is a little annoying, because I was occupying the Ferme de Chateau in the last mission. In a similar vein, my initial deployment zone is limited to the area around the Granville Church, despite the fact that I was able to deploy much further left last time and did so, and it appears that all the supporting Churchills have disappeared. I think I'm particularly going to miss the tanks, and while it's certainly plausible for them to disengage for resupply or redeployment, and for the deployment zones to change, some kind of explanation in the briefing would make me feel a lot better about it. The lack of armour leaves me with an infantry-centric force. I have C Company at my disposal, which is still almost completely intact, plus one of the battalion scout sections in carriers. These are the scouts operating on the right in the last mission, so they're down a team and low on ammunition. There has been no resupply, and the troops are all weakened after the earlier fighting, meaning that they'll get tired faster and take longer to get their breath back. In support, I have a section of the Battalion 3-inch mortars that has been working all day. It's only got 40 high explosive and 3 smoke bombs available. However, there is an interesting wild card in the mix. Some of you may have noticed that the weather is much nicer than it was earlier in the campaign. It stopped raining, the sun has come out, and brought with it air cover. There is a typhoon orbiting the battlefield on call. This is armed with four 20mm cannons and two thousand pound bombs, making it a tremendous asset, providing it can actually deliver its payload on target. There are two ways I can use this. I can give it an area mission, which will see it attempt to spot and engage any targets it can find within a circular zone, or I can give it a point target, which will see it try and bomb specific coordinates. Being a fast-moving aircraft at altitude, it's not guaranteed to identify targets, drop its bombs accurately, or, always concerning, differentiate between friend and foe. Like I said, an interesting wildcard. It's not reliable enough for me to plan around, though. It's only sensible to treat anything the Typhoon manages as a bonus. Essentially, though, I think I have two avenues of approach, left or right. And right runs a higher risk of exposure to those Germans in Le Cas Rouge. Going left, I can hopefully minimise the risk from that direction, move up to the bottom hedgerow of the Chateau complex, and then press forward to clear it out. Advancing across the great big wheat field towards Granville and the Chateau is naturally not ideal, but hopefully I can identify any enemy positions in the bottom hedgerow or the farms for the left with the scouts, and then neutralise them. Again, time is going to be a problem though. There are only 40 minutes on the clock. The battle starts as it means to go on. I'd leaned in favour of a point target for the Typhoon, ordering it to bomb the Chateau Gatehouse Cottage so that I wouldn't have to try and clear it. The first bomb misses, landing in the gardens. The second bomb also misses, but at least obliterates the barn in the outbuildings. The scouts prove my intended route down the track leading left out of Granville, allowing me to get the company FO back into the building he was in the last mission. Following up in that direction on foot incurs some casualties. There are a handful of German troops and a half-track dug in around Le Carouge, exploiting some fragmentary line of sight. And the firm the Chateau has indeed been occupied by an enemy sniper team, who proved to be excellent shots. Despite this, by the 10 minute mark I have the two scout teams lurking near the top of the field on the left without any problems, and the other two carriers, one from the scout section and the other from C Company's HQ, dropping off infantry behind them. 
To cut down on time and exposure, I'm using the carriers to shuttle my infantry forward. But this first time, I've dismounted a little too early. The Germans in Over Le Carouge get a bead on them and cause a few more casualties, sending my men to ground in the wheat. At the top of the field, meanwhile, the scouts dismount and edge forwards, but the section HQ on the right is gunned down by an MG42 behind the hedgerow across the track. The other team is less unlucky and reaches the Bacage line to start spotting targets in the Chateau complex. Following them up is the second wave of troops coming forward in the carriers, and once they're in position, a firefight starts up. It's pretty indecisive. Neither side really seems to have the firepower to gain the upper hand, but it's revealing more enemy positions in the buildings, orchards and gardens. Having called the Typhoon again to little effects, it strafed the half-track in La Carouge instead of anyone at the Chateau, the FO is at least free to start directing the mortars onto the objective. Closer to the front, I now have the better part of two platoons transferred over and I need to expand my line right to fit them all in, in order to build the weight of fire I need. This means dealing with the enemy MG team that destroyed the Scout HQ. The smart move would have been to snuff them out with one of the 2-inch mortars, but the angle isn't great and I don't want to send any of the teams back out into the MG's angle of fire. The remaining scout team edges along the hedgerow until it gets into grenade range, then I give the order to area fire. They start happily blazing away, and after tossing a hand grenade which seems to go off on target, I push them closer to finish off. A messy close range fight develops, because of course the enemy aren't all dead, with both sides eventually reduced to one man. The surviving German proves to be made of sterner stuff than the last scout, who decides he'd rather be elsewhere. Moving a section in to finish the job as the mortars start to fall, the last German continues to be a massive pay and chucks them a hand grenade. He does finally go down, but he's not increased my confidence about trying to clear the chateau buildings at close quarters. My base of fire has certainly been causing casualties, it looks like the outflung German teams have been wiped out, but there are still enemies in the chateau proper and they have a platoon HQ in the outbuildings that is doing a good job of refusing to die, despite being hit repeatedly with a piet. The mortars appear to at least have suppressed the defenders, and while pushing a two-man team through the hedgerow into the complex draws a little fire, it's probably not something I can't deal with. There are, however, only four minutes left on the clock, and I really don't have the stomach to start throwing men away trying to somehow clear all the buildings at breakneck speed. There only needs to be one surviving German inside the objective area for it to be contested, and I really don't think I'll be able to get them all. So I hit the ceasefire button. The result is a tactical defeat for the Brits, not unexpected, and I suspect exactly the same results I would have gotten had I kept going until the timer ran out. There are plenty of angry, highly trained, fanatical enemy nutcases still holed up in the chateau. There are, however, plenty of enemy casualties too. Overall, they've lost 19 dead and 8 wounded. On my side, I've sustained 12 dead and 8 wounded, probably not that bad in the overall scheme of the campaign, but to be frank, I could probably have handled this a lot better. More suppressive fire from the platoon I left in Granville, more realistic targeting for the Typhoon, I bet the Chateau itself would have been a lot harder to miss, more care about lines of sight and making sure to maximise the use of those 2-inch mortars. These are all things that could have made the difference. But the bigger problem was that I was never really fully committed to this mission a starting position that only degraded as the Typhoon missed everything and the enemy proved to be increasingly irritating. A good deal of this is simply part and parcel of the mechanics of a human player versus a historically accurate campaign. No matter what a player does in one mission, which the designer can't know, the next one must inevitably involve a reset to at least an approximation of the history. But these elements all stack up. If I was still occupying the firm The Chateau, there wouldn't have been a German sniper team there. If I had still been occupying the left side of Granville, I would have had less ground to cover. If I had had any of the 12 tanks from the last mission, this mission would have been trivial. If La Carouge was clear, like it was at the end of the last mission, I would have had no secondary enemy positions to worry about. Mix this in with the removal of a combined arms force and a fanatical firepower-rich enemy and, yeah, not my favourite mission. It's over and done with, though. 
things look a lot more straightforward next time, where the Germans will be throwing on another counterattack, this time from the south, and I get some combined arms back to stop them again. Hope you all enjoyed this one and found it interesting. If you'd like to support the channel further, see videos early and vote for the weapons effects shorts, there's a link to the Patreon down in the description. Whether you do or not, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.